Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today we're going to learn a little bit about spins. Uh, what's important to understand here is a lot of this will revolve around you having a fundamental understanding of a stall. Uh, I made a video on that previously, so if, uh, if you have not seen that yet, I would recommend going back, watching that first, and then coming back to this video uh, as there's going to be some implied uh, references to, to stalls as well in this video. Okay, so uh, let's, let's break down what's happening uh, in, in the case of a spin, right? What is a spin? A spin is simply a, a, an uncontrolled condition of flight for an airplane when, where in which it is also stalled. That seems sort of simple. Uh, so let's kind of break that down a little bit more and, and talk a little bit about uh, some of the different uh, elements of a spin. So uh, to start with, right, uh, the first, first main element of a spin is that we have to be stalled. So we need the airplane to be in a stalled condition. The second piece is what is known as an incipient phase. The third is a fully developed spin. And the fourth is the recovery. So I want to walk through each of these different pieces and make sure we understand how uh, they ultimately come together. Uh, so we understand how an airplane stalls. Once again, you can reference the previous video. Uh, now, how do we get into this incipient phase? Well, really for the airplane to start to get into this uncontrolled condition, uh, we are ultimately looking to have one wing become more stalled than another wing. That's where this, this condition of a spin will, will begin. Right? So uh, if we think about that a little bit further, how can we get into a condition where one wing is more stalled than another wing? Uh, and the, the simplest example of this is becoming uncoordinated. Right? So if we are uncoordinated as we stall the airplane, what would happen? Well, if, if we imagine for a moment uh, that we become uncoordinated uh, and let's say we, we, as we're stalling the nose of the airplane, we yaw the nose to the right. Well, what happens when we yaw the nose to the right is we suddenly have a, large, a larger volume or more airflow over the left wing, this out, out, outer wing, and less airflow over the inner wing, in this case, the right wing. What does that mean? It means that they will be at slightly different angles of attack. Uh, and what that equates to is, in this example, if, if that were to occur, we would say then that the right wing is more stalled than the left wing. The left wing is still stalled, but maybe is, is closer to the critical angle of attack. And the right wing, in this case, is much greater than the critical angle of attack. What will that result in? What would happen if we have uh, two stalled wings, but one wing is more stalled than the other wing? Well, in order to understand that a little bit more, what we want to do is uh, understand sort of the, uh, the, the, the physics behind what's happening here. Let's take a look at a chart to better understand the aerodynamic principles that are taking place. If we do, we will notice uh, that if we put a chart together for uh, along the x-axis will be uh, the, the angle of attack and along the y-axis will be uh, either lift slash uh, drag, either way. So some kind of force. If I do that, uh, we, could, we could draw the, the first this concept of, of lift relative to angle of attack. So as I increase my angle of attack, we produce more and more lift, which is true up until a certain point, which is known as the critical angle of attack. Once we reach that critical angle of attack, now lift will sharply fall off uh, and produce less and less lift. What happens then with drag? Well, as we uh, produce higher and higher angles of attack, we create a 
larger pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the wing, really what that results in is an increase in induced drag. So we would know then that the same would occur for the drag curve. At low angles of attack, it would be relatively none, and as we go to higher and higher angles of attack, uh, the, the drag would become even greater. So what we get then is, is this. We get a condition where uh, this drag line, right, and uh, this lift line are going to be, they're going to flip places, right? So normally, when, where we are in normal flight conditions uh, is, is between these. And what we see then is after we exceed our critical angle of attack, we get to a place where uh, the more we increase our angle of attack, uh, the less lift we produce and the more drag we produce. Uh, so this is interesting. Once again, if we, if we imagine our airplane with the, the right wing more stalled than the left wing in that example, what we, uh, what we learned then is if the right wing was more stalled, it would have less lift and more drag. Whereas in this case, then the left wing being less stalled would have less drag and more, uh, more lift available. Still not, it's still a stalled wing, but is still producing uh, relatively more lift than the right wing. So from that, we can get into another image of this airplane. And what we see here is exactly what I was just discussing before. We see that we have a right wing that is at a relatively higher angle of attack and therefore is producing less lift and producing more drag. Alternatively, on the left wing, it's at a slightly lower uh, angle of attack and therefore, in this weird example, producing slightly more lift and less drag. What does that result in? Well, this means that we have a condition now where the airplane uh, has less lift on the, uh, on the right side than it does on the left side. So it's going to roll to the right. Uh, and it's, it's going to continue to roll to the right. Uh, additionally, we also have the uh, airplane, the, 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 the the right side of the wing has, or the right wing has more drag than the left wing. What does that mean? Well, that means that we would yaw to the right as well. And once again, the more we yaw or the more we roll, the more aggravated that condition is going to continue to be. So this is referred to as auto roll and auto yaw, meaning that this condition just perpetuates itself and the airplane would just continue to spiral around and around itself uh, uncontrollably. This is why we referenced uh, the, the idea of it being an uncontrolled stalled flight condition. Uh, this would also be the time, once you're into this, this phase where auto roll and auto yaw have taken over, this is where we would transition back to the fully developed phase of the spin. At this point now, the airplane is just going to to, to continue to fall out of the sky, right, and continue to yaw and roll around its center of gravity. Uh, at this point, the airplane cannot fix itself and would require intervention from a pilot in order to, uh, to recover from this condition. So now we've worked through kind of how we get the airplane into this uncontrolled spinned condition. Let's talk a little bit about how we're going to recover from this particular condition. Uh, I want to make sort of a disclaimer real quick. Every POH will have their own specific technique to recover uh, for that particular make and model of airplane. You need to reference your POH uh, for the specific way that uh, the manufacturer recommends spin recovery there. But in general, there's typically four elements that go into some kind of spin recovery technique, right? So one of the, one of the first options is a rudder in the opposite direction, meaning if we were spinning to the right, we would want to push the left rudder. Second is pitch down. Third is ailerons neutral. And fourth is power idle. Okay, some of these may seem obvious to you, others maybe not so much. Let's break these down a little bit and discuss each one in a little bit more detail. So step one, rudder in the opposite direction. 
Once again, in the example that we had previously, we were spinning to the right. So ideally, we want to stop that auto yaw by applying left rudder. In a spin condition, our rudder is still is, is not a stalled airfoil. Uh, it's still able to produce a force, in which case pushing the left rudder in that example would uh, ideally reduce or entirely stop the auto yaw to the right. Next is pitch down. Okay, well pitching down, what is the function of this? We're once again attempting to try to uh, break the airplane out of a stalled condition. If the airplane is installed, then we're not in a spin. We're just simply uh, in a steep spiraling turn, right? Uh, but it's not a spinned condition. So pitching down is ideally there to, once again, try to break the stall or reduce our angle of attack. Third on there was ailerons neutral. So this is kind of interesting because Inherently, once again in our example, if we were spinning to the right, natural instinct is to grab the yoke and crank it over to the left. What happens if we were to do that, right? What happens if we're spinning to the right uh, and we move the ailerons uh, to the left? Well, first let's think about the movement of the ailerons. As we move the yoke to the left, we know the left aileron will go up, the right aileron will go down. Ideally, then that means that uh, the right aileron would have a greater angle of attack. However, if you recall as to what causes this whole uh, auto yaw and auto roll specifically, uh, it means the right wing is already at a higher angle of attack than the left wing. It is more stalled than the left wing. So by increasing its angle of attack even more by putting that aileron down, we're going to cause this airplane to roll even harder into the direction of the spin. That auto roll will only become more aggravated. Now, you might say, okay, well, let's do the opposite. Let's roll to the right. Yeah, okay, fine. Theoretically, that may help in breaking the stalled condition, but this is not a normal reaction. If you're spinning to the right, your reaction is not to roll to the right more, right? So. It's easier to just simply remember, keep the ailerons neutral. Don't move them, just keep them neutral. And that way, uh, we won't have to deal with any negative impact of, of going the wrong direction. The last item was power idle. Why do we want the power to be at idle? Well, once again, the airplane is in this condition of auto yaw and auto roll. What does that mean? It means that it's, it's gonna continue on this cycle indefinitely unless we break it. Adding power at this point is only going to make that spinning happen faster, meaning it's going to, to tighten the, the spin even more aggressively. So we want power idle so that it's not aggravated any further. Uh, additionally, this is valuable because once we, we break the stalled condition, we're now at a generally a fairly low pitch attitude. If we have a lot of power and are at a low pitch attitude, we're gonna gain airspeed very quickly, right? And then uh, we have potentially some issues as we pull out of this dive uh, that we could exceed uh, G-force limitations or uh, exceed airspeed limitations. So easiest to remember power idle, uh, this will prevent any of that from occurring. So now we've walked through our four different sort of phases of this spin. I want to just go over a few last key takeaways uh, for you in this video. First is, as we stall an airplane or if we're about to stall an airplane, remember to remain coordinated. This whole stall uh, spin piece is, uh, revolves around us being uncoordinated as we stall an airplane. So, it should be a key takeaway for you that as you ever practice stalls or if you find yourself in conditions where you might be about to stall, remember to remain coordinated all the time. Number two, uh, if the airplane does begin to roll into a spin, uh, you should begin the recovery technique immediately. And what I mean by that is you don't have to wait for the stall to become fully developed to recover from it, right? If you uh, see the airplane starting to yaw and roll uh, to one direction, you can immediately begin your recovery uh, technique or your recovery procedure. Uh, and the last piece that I want you to take away from this is uh, the recovery pieces that we talked about are generally four elements that are found in all recovery procedures. However, different manufacturers have different recommendations. So, 
always check your POH, make sure that you know your particular recovery procedure in your exact make and model aircraft. Uh, once again, my name is Eric uh, at AeroGuard Flight Training Center. I hope this video has been very helpful and insightful and learned a little bit more about uh, spins. Don't forget to like or subscribe uh, to the channel here. We'll continue to produce more and more of this content every week. Uh, thank you very much and we'll see you later. Bye.